Hello, my name is Daniel Andre, and I'll be your instructor for this Selenium course in Excel. Selenium is an open source automation framework that allows you to automate tasks in a browser. In this instance, we'll be using Chrome browser. So let's get started by going to the Chrome Selenium basic uh, page. So it, this is the first result, github.io. Then we click on view on github. Then on this, on releases here. And then we click on this execute file. Next, we are going to see the version of Chrome. About Chrome version. We see here that we have version 113.0 we go to search for Chrome driver the first result Chromium and here based on our version we select the Chrome driver so it's 113 so we click on this here we select the operating system in my case it is Windows Next, I'm going to install this. We first install the Selenium Basic. Here you can select your browser if you want. But for now, we're, we're going to use Chrome. Here is the folder. I'm going to copy this and install. Finish. Next, we extract this file. In, we place it in the same folder where we installed Selenium. Click on it and select folder, extract. It says that there is already a file there, so I presume that uh, the on the GitHub release page it has already a Chrome driver. But to be sure that we have the correct version, we're just gonna release it, replace it. Okay. Next, we need to, to put the Selenium Chrome driver into the environment path. So we're going to search for uh, environment variables. So we're going to click on edit on this environment variables. Under system variables, we're going to go down on path, double click. And here I have an older version, so I'm going to delete this one. And then I'm going to click on New and paste what I just copied. I'm going to click OK, OK, and OK. Next, I'm going to create an a Excel document. Let's name it Automation Selenium. So for this to work, we're going to need the developer tab. So if you don't see this, just go to file, options, customize ribbon. And in this, in your case, this developer tab is going to be unticked. So just tick it and, it's, and then click, click OK. On the developer tab, just click on Visual Basic. First, we need to add the reference to the Selenium basic. So on this page window, we're going to search for Selenium. You can scroll or you can just click S on your keyboard that you bring you down to the S and then we see it here and make sure that this is pointing to the right directive. So in my case, it's pointing to uh, Selenium 64. 64 stands for your uh, operating system uh, bytes. We click OK. Then we insert a module and we write public sub open page. So just to test it. So I'm going to put deem good as web driver. 
So we're gonna put boot dot start and in brackets in quotes we're gonna put we're gonna select the browser so in this case is Chrome comma and here we put the link what page we want to open it needs to start with HTTP or HTTPS let's go to Google and let's put let's load the page because this only opens the Chrome browser it does not go to this page so to do to go to the page we go boot that get and we put it like this and a slash so if this is gonna add a slash at the end of this it's gonna be like this and let's wait a bit until it closes wait one second so 1000 is one second and then boot that quit let's run this so we have a problem oh I forgot to put new here so I'm gonna press this new so it's gonna make a new element so if we run this it opens Chrome and then it closes it so it, it works thank you for watching uh, please leave a like a comment and if you want please subscribe to the channel hello everyone if this is just an announcement hello today I'm going to show you how to do automation in Excel using selenium framework in Visual Basic application so the goal for today is to accept a cookie pop-up on google.com so let's start uh, Excel click on developer Visual Basic and first we install references we tick some boxes click S selenium okay insert module public sub open page so we do dim boot as new web driver so this is what stands at the core of selenium this is what makes it tick the web driver so we need this and then to start com you do boot dot start chrome and then we add the url http google.com so you always need http added or https now if we run this it's not gonna do anything it's just gonna open chrome it's not gonna go to this page because we need to load it so we do that by using boot that get now it's gonna load it so let's see what it does and it's coming here and then it closes it so two problems we need to maximize the window and we need to make it not close so fast so we do boot that window dot not maximize and we do wood dot wait and we put 500 and actually let's put 200 and we put boot dot quit run this and voila we get to the page okay so now we we have this I'm gonna put this as 40 seconds so 
So each time you go to a page, it downloads on your computer from the server a copy with all of the elements uh, of the HTTP, HTML. So to access that, you click on F12. This opens up the console tool and then you click on this tool. And here, this way, in this way, you can select the elements. You can select this and you can see here that each element has a class uh, and a name. We cannot use the class, but we can use something else. We click uh, right and then we go to copy and then copy full path. I'm going to show you how to use the class, but we cannot use this class because it has a space. It, ha it has multiple classes. So I'm going to change this to 10 seconds and I'm gonna add some waiting time here 2000 so we're gonna do uh, set C button equal boot dot Find. So you can find an element using multiple ways by class, by ID, CSS, link, name. But for now, we're going to use XPath. And we're going to put paste this here, what we copied. And we're going to declare this at the top. So we're going to put dim as so we do it selenium dot web element. Now we put here C button dot oh no we, we do boot dot mouse dot move to button dot click so this is gonna click it now if we didn't have this wait this code would run all at once that means that the page isn't loaded yet and this will run which will give an error saying that we cannot find this element because this element doesn't exist so that is why we wait three seconds so this code executes and after three seconds when the page loads this code runs and this okay we're done now we add this text area so we have it has a class so we copy that and now we do we wait again, wait, and we do set input text equal boot dot find element by class this time. copy this from here, paste it here, copy this, click that and then to add text we put boot dot send keys and we put Amazon And so it's gonna enter the Amazon and next uh, I don't think that we need to wait for this tell Amazon and then so we're gonna click on search so we're gonna has so this, let, let's do it again.
copy. So we copy that. I'm gonna paste it here. We just copy this and change this search button. Copy this, paste it here. We're gonna wait for this one. Boot that. Wait one second, and we're gonna do this. Uh, dot click and hold dot move to oh we're gonna click on this one so this goes here and this goes here Let's see how it, if it works. And it works. So let's uh, continue from where we left off. So we are on the Amazon. We want to click on the Amazon link. But firstly, we have some code that is a bit redundant here like this so i'm gonna show you some stuff so we declared the c button here as an element so what we can do we can comment this we comment with the this so we put c button c button dot click click here we declare I will need another one so here we declare the input and then the search here I'm gonna put it like this and this the same and then I'm gonna just use the text I'm gonna put dot click so we don't need this anymore mouse that that move to click <clears throat> and here as well so put it like this search yes search button that click but before this I have to put hold on uh, input input text that click and hold <coughs> and then so let's see how this works we have a problem element not visible so input text click and hold so I think we need to put some waiting time here that's why it, it isn't finding this i think Oh, I know, I know what's going on. So we didn't put here 
input text dot send keys Amazon <coughs> now it should work yes and it works oh close that but there is one more thing that we can do this code here we can remove this because <coughs> there is a method so we can put input text dot submit and now we don't need this anymore so I'm gonna comment this comment this as well <coughs> so you see now we want this but the but we okay we want the this to click on so we do it we click on F12 we select it and we see here that this has a, a text in it so we copy this close it and then we put here find element by partial link actually I think we can put find find element by link text and we put dot click so let's see okay so this doesn't work so let's put it the other one partial link Amazon page so now we want to click on this how we do that is we get the input And we get the class actually let's get the full X path because it's easier that way so we wait for the page to load wait two seconds and then we put boot that find element by X path And that click and he's gonna click it <coughs> and then I want to click on this no that is not what I want I was hoping to see yeah we have here a hover if we hover is gonna appear this so okay so let's continue from where we left off
last time. So we're gonna move the mouse to this button, which is, and then hover over it, and then click on this link. But you can see here that we do not get any option for this. We can see that the class changes. So this is something that is done using JavaScript. And, and um, we cannot get the class because this changes it. And uh, also there is some space between the classes and we cannot use that. But we can use the partial, the, the text. So find element by partial link. Okay, so first let's get the ID for this, the class. So let's do good, let's set a variable, set over account equal boot dot find element by class. Then we're gonna do boot dot mouse dot move to hover account. So this will have this will be like a hover. So we'll, it's gonna move the mouse to that button. Then we're gonna do boot dot find element by partial link and the element is this so we're gonna copy it and we're gonna click it so let's see if this works. And we got an error. Okay, let's put some waiting time here. Maybe that's the problem. Okay, so it's not finding it. Let's put here that click and let's do it again. I think there is a problem with this button here. Let's get this copy. And and here actually we don't need this here. Let's do it again. Keep 
keeps clicking on this. Okay, maybe there is another class here. So let's let's see. Yeah, this is you see it has nav line two. So it's clicking on this instead of clicking on what we want. So let's go back to this. We can get the full X path debug. We can do this. And it does it, but it's clicking on sign in here somehow instead of clicking on this because we don't need to sign in to click on that. Let's copy this again and let's let's remove this because it's should only be moving to that, not clicking on it. Okay, so it's done it. Next, let's see what we should do next. maybe change this so let's look here search so we see that we have some options here i'm gonna show you how to select a, an option so let's get the let's get the id from this copy Let's comment this and this. So here I'll put set drop down list call would that find element by ID. And then we do it like this. We drop and we do boot that mouse that click. Now let's let's check again. So it's yeah, we need to click on it. So let's we first move to it. That click. That. Then we do boot. That actions. Okay, not actions. So 
we first we need to declare this at the top so let's just change this with this and then we do it like this as select dot and we have some options here select by index text value so we are going to select by value as we've seen that we have some string some naming so let's select this one computers just copy this and then we put it here so let's try it It's a drop down list. Okay, so changed it. Okay, thank you for watching. I'll be seeing you in the next video. Please leave a like, a comment, and if you want, please subscribe. In this lesson, I'm going to teach you how to uh, get the title of a product in Amazon and the price from here. Okay, let's get the URL. We're going to add it here. And let's copy the title. So we'll, let's get it by the ID. Text dot not text this should work and uh, then I wanna debug this I wanna print it so we're gonna put dot print gonna put this there and let's let's open the debug window now let's look at the price so it's a span so we can do copy full expat gonna do the same thing here so uh, 
let's change the price and here let's put title copy this paste it here Price the text. Remove this. And this. And let's run this. And we got it here. Now, if we wanna place this into a cell instead of uh, printing it into the debug uh, window, we can uh, do this. So I'm gonna put range a one dot value equal title dot text and here as well we're gonna put a2 price let's comment this Let's run it. And we have it here. Thank you for watching. Hello. Today I'm going to show you how to send emails in uh, gmail.com using automation in, in Selenium. So we see here that we have three emails and this uh, uh, code is dynamic. So if you add another email, it's gonna uh, send that email to that uh, address as well. So it's gonna send this hello and this uh, uh, I thank you for e for your email uh, as the body. So let's look a bit. Uh, let's look a bit at the code. So here we declare the uh, some variables. We declare some ranges. We declare some elements. Here we start Chrome. We op we uh, insert the page. We load the page. We get the main email that is going to be used to log in from cell A1. Here we get the emails, so from A1 to A and last row. So this code here checks what is the last row with data. Uh, then we get the subject and the body. Here we, we introduce the uh, main email into the email field. We click on next. We wait for a bit to for the page to load. We enter the password. Then we click on next. Then when we get to the Gmail, we click on compose email button. Uh, then we declare. Oh, actually, I forgot this step. So we are gonna loop over those uh, emails. So for each email in that range is gonna send a, um, an email. Okay, so we click on email that field, we enter the cell value, what email it is in this range, we release it then we click on another element on the page because there is a pop-up that appears and it kind of messes up with the program. So we click on search, then go back to the subject box 
we entered the uh, subject value then we find this um, this I haven't shown yet it's find element by CSS so you find it by the attribute I'm gonna show you how to find it important is it it's that you sh it shouldn't be like this two words if it's two words I don't think that it's gonna work next you click on it um, no, you click on it. The program clicks on it. Uh, then it waits. Then it adds the body value. And then it clicks on send. And then it goes again at the top and, and adds the other emails. So let's start this. Let's maximize. Email added. Password added. So it's gonna click on this compose when the page loads. Okay. It's gonna click on search, back, test. And now you see, he send it. Now the second email. And the third email. Okay, I'm gonna delete or just leave it uh, as they are. Let's add another email here. Uh, John Tom at gmail.com just to see that it works for this, uh, for a new uh, email as well. And let's run this. Just gonna delete these ones. So the first one, the second one, it's not gonna show it because these are fake addresses, email addresses. And the third one should show now. Uh, I think there has been some problem. Let's delete this. Let's refresh the page. Uh, let's close this. And try again. Let's see what. Email field that click. Let's delete. Let's try it again and see what's going on. Maybe because I was deleting those stuff, it, in it impacted the code. Yeah, so it works. Next, I'm gonna show you how to find element by at, by this attribute. So I'm gonna stop. Okay, so find element by CSS, and the attribute is role, and this is the string text. So you will notice that the, on the Gmail uh, website, these elements, IDs and classes change at, after some time. So if you copy this ID after five or 10 minutes, it's gonna change and the code won't run anymore. If you do copy and uh, copy XPath, 
is going to be the same. So what you can do, you can uh, use a, a find element by CSS. You see the attribute here, role, and the text. You cannot use, as far as I know, this one, like this, because it has a space, message, body. That won't work. Uh, next, this one, send button. It was a bit tricky with this one as well. So, if we click on it, you will see we get this element, but I didn't choose to, to use it because I couldn't make it work. So I choose to click on the class, on the element parent. So on this DC class, and it worked. I could have used the roll button, but I didn't. I choose to do it this way. Could have worked that way as well. Most likely, yes. Okay, that's all. If you have any questions, please leave a comment and I'll respond as fast as I can. And thank you for watching. In this lecture, I'll be teaching you how to send an attachment with the emails uh, that we uh, were composing last time. So we can see here let me move this here. We have an attachment button, and if you click it, it's gonna bring us to this uh, folder directory. So I wanna add the screenshot, um, this screenshot, to it. So how we can do that is if we search for the element using the developer tools. And if we click on it, it brings us this element, this div. But we do not want to add the screenshot to this element because it's not going to work. This is just an element. To add files to a website, we need to, the website needs to have a input file. This and the type needs to be file. It's, it's, you can see that we cannot see it on the web page because it's hidden. So if I make this bigger, you can see here that the height is zero. So if I put this as 10 and this the width as 10, I remove the opacity. Uh, I'm gonna put this as 100. Let's put as 100 pixels, and this as 10, and the display as block. And let's add the background color. So background color. And let's add it as this. Let's see here. It should show somewhere now. If I go down a bit. Oh, it disappeared. Where is it? here and I think we need to change this to one position overflow hidden then let's see here so I cannot see it let's make it bigger Yes, so now you can see it here at the bottom. Let's move it a bit. Let's add minus Oh, because it is in that div, I cannot move it up. But you can see it here, this button. This is an input field. 
and it's hidden. So when you click on this, this is click on. So if I click on this, it brings up to the same uh, interface, the same window. Now, what you need to do is just copy this. So we can find it by um, the uh, full path. So if we click on it, we find it like that. It doesn't matter if it is hidden. We cannot see it. That's just as us we cannot see it. But it is on the web page. The code is still there. So let's open uh, not this, this. I uh, wait. Uh, is this one? So if, if we go to the okay, so at the bottom of the script, I added this line. So we find the element by CSS. We find it by input, the element, and then the type file, and then we send the keys. We do not click on it. We send the keys. So we send the... So here you can put wherever you put your uh, image or file, but it needs to accept the type of file. So, yeah. Sometimes you will see accepted file type, uh, and you'll they'll define what kind of uh, file they can accept for that input type. So you added it and now it's sending it. Send one. So that's how you do it. In this lesson, we're gonna learn how to interact with the console in the developer tools. We can use the console to find, uh, to run code and to find the elements using document that uh, query selector or get element by ID, name or class. We're gonna use the element from last session. So the file input, we have it here. And we go to console at the top and we write document dot query selector. This finds elements by uh, CSS. So CSS is uh, the attributes and the styles. So we put input file input type equal I have to put double quotes here because I put at the start single quotes file and he finds it we can find this element by the name as well dot get element by name name um, file data and he finds it as well and if you we expand this this array we can see that it finds only one element because here is zero and the length is one we can find elements by class So let's choose a class. I'm going to choose this one. And here we can see that it found seven elements with this class. 
Usually in web development, we use classes, class names, for multiple elements. It shares the same styles, the same kind of code, the same code for, for the class. Now, and on the other hand, elements by ID are only used once. This, this is the norm. Of course, there are exceptions to this norm. So if you find an element with an ID, find this one, you can see the class and this AC4 here. And put it here. And we find it with the class. So it can be quite useful using the DOM. That's what this is called. Okay. So thank you for watching.